Hi there, I'm glad to welcome you to my channel, World of Stories. I have a lot of interesting life stories that I want to share with you. Enjoy listening. By evening, the office had emptied out. The light dimly reflected off the glass walls, and only the sound of keystrokes from Brian's laptop filled the air. He sat at his desk, surrounded by piles of papers and documents. Brian was absorbed in the numbers, going through reports that seemed endless. It was already late, and the darkness had settled outside. Hey, buddy, don't you think it's time to head home? Came Chad's voice. He wasn't just Brian's assistant, but also a longtime friend, and it wasn't uncommon to find him in unexpected places, like now, at the end of the workday. Brian looked up, but didn't respond immediately. His gaze was fixed on the laptop screen, where the data from the reports blurred in his mind. Chad, come here, Brian said without looking up. Chad walked over to the desk and leaned against it, studying the screen carefully. What's going on? You're usually so focused, but now it seems like something's off, he noticed the tension in his friend's voice. The numbers in these reports don't add up, Brian said, his voice full of doubt. You signed these papers, Chad. Can you explain something to me? Chad swallowed hard. He knew this could be more complicated than usual. It was as if he instinctively felt the situation was more serious than it seemed. Um, buddy, do you really think I'd set you up? Chad widened his eyes, trying to hide his worry, but his voice betrayed his nervousness. I don't think you're setting me up, Brian replied, but there was a hint of displeasure in his tone. But you know we have to be more careful with documents like these. We both know that our future and our reputation are at stake. Chad felt a tightness in his chest. Brian had always been strict and demanding, but something in his voice and his eyes made Chad uneasy. Hey, don't yell at me, Chad said, trying to pull himself together. I'm sure we can explain this. Maybe there's a mistake somewhere, but we'll sort it out. He put a hand on his friend's shoulder to calm him down. But Brian wasn't in the mood for a calm conversation. He leaned forward, almost resting his weight on the desk. Sort it out? Chad, we don't have time to sort this out. These are crucial reports for the bank, and if we mess this up, everything's going to hell. Do you understand this could be a disaster for both of us? Chad felt a lump in his throat. He was confused. Moments like this made him doubt himself. And all the time he had worked with Brian, he had never faced such serious accusations. Fine, Brian stood up, pushing away from the desk. He couldn't look at those reports anymore. It's late. We'll deal with all this tomorrow, he said, his voice quieter, but still firm. Brian, I'll handle it, Chad said, a touch of desperation in his voice, feeling his confidence begin to crumble. He wasn't as sure of himself anymore. Without responding, Brian gathered his things and quickly left the office. Chad remained standing, staring at the empty desk. He felt like something was wrong but couldn't figure out what. The question spinning in his mind was, what if I missed something? Once outside, Brian breathed in the fresh, yet cold air. He closed his eyes, trying to clear his mind of thoughts. The anxiety in his chest wouldn't go away. He couldn't believe that Chad could have made a mistake with such important reports. Though, maybe it was just a coincidence. Brian knew Chad had always been a little scatterbrained, but he had never broken such serious rules. He closed his eyes and took a deep breath. The stress that had accumulated over three years suddenly felt painfully overwhelming. He got into the car, started the engine, and drove down the empty highway. On the way home, he called Jessica, his wife, who had always supported him through the toughest times. Jess, are you home yet? Brian asked when she answered the phone. His voice sounded tired, but he tried not to let it show. Yeah, honey, Jessica replied, and he could hear her warm smile in her voice. I even made dinner, just the way you like it. I'll be home soon, Brian said, his voice softening. He quickly ended the call, not wanting to give himself time to think. He couldn't tell Jessica what had happened at the office. It was too soon, and she worried too much about him. Brian entered the house, took off his coat, 
and walked into the hallway. Holding his breath, he took out his phone and checked the screen. A new message from Monica. He already knew what it would say. She couldn't resist texting him whenever he disappeared for a few hours. He opened the message. Baby, I miss you already. When will I see you? Brian froze for a moment, as if unsure of what to do, but then quickly deleted the message after reading it to himself. His fingers trembled slightly, but he calmed himself, putting the phone back in his pocket. He didn't want Jessica to notice anything. She was everything he had, and the only person who had helped him become who he was. Her family was the key that had opened doors for him in the business world. Only she could support his career at the dealership. This knowledge kept him on edge, and he understood that he couldn't afford to make a mistake. Not in anything. As he walked into the kitchen, he heard the soft clink of glasses. Jessica was setting the table, and her smile, as always, lit up the room. She was so warm, so homey, and he hated himself for the fact that, despite all of that, his thoughts were on Monica. Hey, honey, Jessica said, turning to him and meeting his gaze. She was wearing a cozy robe, with damp hair that looked gorgeous. How are you? Everything's fine, Brian replied, wrapping his arms around her waist and gently kissing her cheek. He could smell her perfume, the scent of home, and for a moment he felt guilty. But despite that, he gathered himself. How was your day? Everything okay? Oh, everything's great, Jessica smiled wider, and Brian felt her energy transferring to him. Today we closed a big contract, and you know, even my dad praised me for it. I'm so proud of myself. It was my project, and it really worked out. That's amazing, Brian said, tilting his head and looking at her with pride. He understood how important it was for her to get her father's recognition, and even if he wasn't completely sincere in his admiration, he couldn't help but respect her. He poured wine into two glasses and handed one to her. Let's celebrate. Let's, Jessica took the glass, and their eyes met. She was radiating happiness, and that feeling was contagious. You know, I really think we're going to accomplish everything we've set out to do. Even your work is going well, she raised an eyebrow slightly, as if letting him know she noticed the improvement in his mood. Brian nodded, but his mind wasn't as bright as his expression. In truth, his life was full of secrets. And no matter how much he loved his wife, there was a part of him that would never belong entirely to her. I'm proud of you, Jess. You're a real force, he said, raising his glass. You deserve this success. Jessica smiled, her eyes sparkling with happiness. She was glad his words were sincere. In moments like this, he was her pride, and she was proud of what they had built together. They both raised their glasses and, offering a toast, took a sip. The wine was light, but to Brian, it tasted bitter. The dinner was cozy and calm. They ate, discussed future plans, laughed, and reminisced about funny stories from the past. Brian felt the tension ease a little, but thoughts of Monica wouldn't leave him. He watched Jessica talk about her successes, how she glowed, and he felt guilty again. She was so honest, so real. After dinner, when Jessica, as if in slow motion, began to yawn and stretch, Brian suggested she get some rest. Honey, you need to sleep, he said, pointing at the empty plate in front of her. You've worked so hard today. What about you? Jessica asked, looking at him with mild concern. You look tired. You need to rest too. I'm fine, Brian replied, though his eyes betrayed his fatigue. He was tense and couldn't shake the feeling of anxiety. When Jessica went to the bedroom, he stayed in the kitchen, cleaning up and thinking about everything that had happened during the day. When everything quieted down and the house filled with silence, Brian took out his phone and checked for any new messages. He opened the screen and, once again, found a message from Monica asking when they'd meet. He felt the internal conflict tearing at him again. I miss you too. Let's have a nice evening tomorrow, he typed and after a few seconds, deleted the message as if nothing had happened. He put the phone down and, after a brief pause, closed his eyes. The slight headache wouldn't go away, but he was certain of one thing, 
he had no other choice. Jessica was his support, and despite all the challenges, he couldn't lose what they had built together. Brian's morning started as usual. He woke up early, made coffee, and plated sandwiches with cheese and ham, waiting for Jessica to come downstairs. She looked stunning, as always, even though she hadn't gotten much sleep. The look in her tired but bright eyes told him the day would be full of activity. Morning, darling, she said, walking into the kitchen and sitting at the table. She kissed him on the cheek as he poured himself coffee. I'm not having breakfast. I'm already running late, and you know how my dad feels about that. You always say you're running late, Brian said with a smile, handing her the cup of coffee. But you still manage to be on time. Jessica nodded and grabbed her purse, giving him a quick glance. Are you sure you will get everything done today? You look a bit tired, she observed while Brian stood, watching her. Of course, Brian replied. Everything will be fine. Go ahead. I won't hold you up. She kissed him on the lips as a goodbye, and without another word, ran into the hallway, slamming the door behind her. Brian stayed in the kitchen, staring at his empty coffee cup, thinking for a moment. Jessica had always been so strong, so focused. He liked that about her, but sometimes he felt their life was becoming too predictable, too calm. He hoped there was something he could do about it but now wasn't the time for reflection. He had to leave too. The office was as noisy as usual. Brian walked past his employees, greeting them with a glance and brief gestures. He felt at home here, but inside, there was still a sense of unease. As soon as he entered his office, Monica followed him. She locked the door, as she always did. Now, no one will interrupt us, she whispered in his ear and kissed him passionately. He kissed her back, momentarily forgetting all the work and problems surrounding him. It all felt so easy, so relaxing, until there was a knock at the door. They pulled away abruptly. Monica quickly jumped up and opened the door. Chad stood in the doorway, his face serious, his gaze fixed directly on Monica. Step out, he said sharply. Monica, surprised by his tone, glanced at Brian as if asking what to do. Brian nodded, signaling for her to leave the office. Monica, holding back her emotions, stepped out, leaving Brian and Chad alone. Once the door closed behind her, Chad entered the office and crossed his arms over his chest. Man, what are you doing? He asked, not hiding his surprise. What if Jessica finds out? Brian looked at him calmly. She won't find out if you don't tell her, Brian answered calmly as he sat down at his desk. He said it without a hint of doubt, as if he were sure the matter was settled. Chad sighed heavily but said nothing more. He placed a folder with documents on the desk. I spent the whole night double-checking the papers, and I realized there is no mistake on my part, he said, pushing the folder toward Brian. Look, here are the documents I signed, and here's the one with the mistake. Brian took the folder and carefully looked through the papers. He skimmed through each page, but no matter how hard he tried, he couldn't figure out where the mistake was. He kept running the data through his head, cupping his head in his hands. I don't understand, he said, looking at Chad, confused. He wasn't used to these kinds of situations. Brian was usually confident, but in that moment, his confidence wavered. Noticing his confusion, Chad gave a small smirk. At least now you know it's not my fault, he replied, his voice almost sarcastic. Brian set the documents aside and stared out the window, feeling the simmering frustration inside him. This wasn't just a mistake. It was a setup. But who could be behind it? Someone's definitely trying to set me up, but who? Brian wondered aloud, looking at Chad as if he might have an answer. Chad approached the desk and placed his hand on the documents, tapping them lightly with his finger, as if emphasizing their importance. We can only guess. But if this isn't my mistake, but someone else's, then it's all been orchestrated. Someone wants you to lose your reputation. Brian thought for a moment. He couldn't afford to be framed. His position was too fragile, too dependent on Jessica and her family.
He understood perfectly that if this mistake became public, his entire career would crumble. We'll figure this out, he said firmly, standing up. But for now, we need to cover it up. As best as we can. Chad nodded, sensing the determination in Brian's voice. Got it. We'll work through it. The key is not to get caught by whoever's behind this. They could be anywhere. They discussed their strategy for a little longer, but both knew this issue wouldn't be resolved quickly. The tension between them grew. Brian realized more and more that this day was going to be crucial. When Chad left the office, Brian was left alone with his thoughts, which kept returning to one question, who could be behind this plot, and why? And who was this invisible enemy? He opened the documents again, but this time, he couldn't focus. Thoughts of Monica and Jessica mingled with his anxiety about what was happening. Brian felt the situation slipping out of control, and it scared him. The evening was cold, and the city was descending into darkness. Leaving the office, Brian no longer thought about work. All his thoughts were consumed with one thing, Monica. Ever since they'd started seeing each other a year ago, Brian had slowly become more attached to her. Their relationship had turned into more than just a fleeting affair, but a kind of escape from the life around him. And even though he knew it was just an affair, he couldn't stop. After all, every moment with her felt like a break from the dull routine. Brian parked the car outside her house. When the door opened, Monica stood in the doorway, wearing her robe, her hair tousled. You came, she said, smiling. I've missed you so much. Brian didn't answer with words. He just embraced her and kissed her. It was a familiar gesture, but right now, Brian felt that it was more than just passion. It was something deeper. He was here, and that was all that mattered. A few hours later, they were lying on the couch, holding each other. Brian relaxed, feeling the anxiety and stress dissolve as he melted into the softness of her body. But as soon as his hand slid across her stomach, he looked at her. She was gazing at him with a quiet, almost imperceptible smile. You think this will all pass, don't you? She asked, as if trying to find an answer she couldn't quite reach. What? Brian raised his gaze, but said nothing more. Monica sighed, and his attention shifted back to her. You don't want me to stay in your life forever, do you? You don't want anything more than just nights together? Brian knew this conversation was inevitable, but he wasn't ready for it. Monica, you know I can't give you more than that, he said, his voice cold. I have a family. You know how things are. Monica slightly pulled away her expression growing serious, even harsh. I'm not asking for much, Brian, she said, her voice carrying a quiet hint of hurt. I just want you to be there. Do you understand how I feel? He remained silent, unsure of what to say. Words didn't come to mind. Instead, his gaze returned to her eyes, and he suddenly realized that all this time, he'd been avoiding something important. But no matter how much he tried, he was still attached to her, as if she were something he couldn't leave behind. Later, when the night had deepened, Brian stood up, preparing to leave. I have to go, he said, sliding his hand across her shoulder as he reached for his clothes. Monica silently watched him, unmoving. When he finished dressing, she walked toward him. Honey, I have a surprise for you, she said, smiling, as his gaze was already focused on the door. He snorted and turned toward her. I don't like surprises, he said, laughing awkwardly. But Monica, despite his cold response, kept looking at him with a sincere smile, as if she already knew he wouldn't be able to leave without at least looking at her surprise. She pulled a small box from the nightstand, opened it, and handed it to Brian. It was a pregnancy test, with two bright red lines clearly visible. What's this? Brian froze, his heart skipping a beat. He didn't know what to say. Thoughts rushed through his mind, but they didn't come together. He stared at the lines on the test, unable to believe his eyes. Monica looked at him, her excitement barely contained. You're going to be a dad, she said with a warm smile, as if it were inevitable. Brian felt everything slow down. He grabbed his head with his hands, unsure of what to do.
His heart started racing, and panic set in. No, you'll get rid of these problems. He snapped, trying to hide his confusion. Monica couldn't believe her ears. She quickly stepped closer, trying to catch his gaze. But I want this baby, she said, trying to hold on to him. Her voice was soft, but her eyes filled with tears. I want him to be yours. Brian knew those words were sincere. But there was no place for this in his life. He was almost at the door when he left money on the nightstand. This is for you. You'll figure out what to do with it, he said, not looking at her. His voice was dry, almost indifferent. And yes, you're fired. Monica couldn't understand what was happening. She sat there, stunned, unable to move or say anything. Her eyes were filled with tears. You can't do this to me. She screamed, unable to hold back her emotions. You'll regret this. Her words sounded like a threat, but Brian didn't turn around or respond. He left, slamming the door behind him. Monica was left alone in the room, wrapped in a blanket, unable to comprehend what was happening in her life. Her emotions were like a storm, jealousy, anger, confusion. And despite all those feelings, she knew that, at some point, Brian would come back. Brian knew that returning home wouldn't be easy. He had long gotten used to a life that was becoming increasingly two-sided. On one side was his family, and on the other, Monica, his mistress, whom he couldn't forget. He saw every moment of his return as a tense shot, expecting one of these two worlds to collide. But today, he felt especially tired, tired of his own lies and betrayals. When he opened the door, there was a soft sound in the hallway, and he immediately noticed that the light was on in the living room. Jessica was sitting on the couch with a glass of wine in her hand. She was in her usual comfortable chair, looking relaxed, but something in her gaze made him feel uneasy. Darling, why are you so late? She asked, bringing the glass to her lips. Her voice was soft, but there was a hint of concern that Brian immediately picked up on. He took off his jacket and walked into the living room, and at that moment, his heart beat a little faster than usual. He wasn't ready for this question. A lot of work, he replied, closing his eyes to hide the tension. He was sure Jessica could feel something was off. But, as always, he hoped she wouldn't press him. He quickly added, I'm going straight to bed, I'm really tired. Jessica raised an eyebrow but stayed silent. She didn't respond immediately. Her gaze became more focused, as if she were carefully considering his words. Brian knew she didn't believe him. But what was she going to do about it? Are you sure you're okay? She asked when he was about to turn and head to his room. He slowed his step and stopped again. Jessica wasn't the type to back down easily, and that was clear. She was the kind of woman who wanted to know everything, even if it meant spending the whole night asking questions. Yeah, I'm fine, he replied shortly, his voice becoming sharper, as if he were trying to convince himself. She didn't take her eyes off him. You know how I feel when you pull away, she said, still unconvinced by his words. You're not like this, Brian. You've always been open with me. He felt irritation rise within him. Why couldn't she just let it go? Why couldn't she just believe what he was saying? Jessica, he started, trying to calm down. You know there's a lot going on at work. I just haven't had time for myself, and I'm tired. Trust me, that's all I can say. Maybe you want to tell me something? Jessica didn't look away. We've always shared everything with each other. You're not alone, Brian. You know if you need to talk, I'm here. He froze. Those words, seemingly meant to comfort him, only made him question everything. Why couldn't she see that something was wrong between them? Why couldn't she feel his guilt, his double life, his fears? It made him doubt his decision. Jessica, I'm just tired, he repeated, his voice cold again. It's been a tough week. Let's not talk about it right now, okay? Finally, she set down her glass and stood up. She walked toward him, and he noticed how her expression had changed. The gentle kindness that had always been there was gone. 
Now, she looked at him with a slight irritation, almost confusion, and he could feel her trying to figure out what was happening. Brian, you're not yourself, she said in a calm but tense voice. Something's wrong. I know you're hiding something from me, and I don't like it. We've been together for a long time, and I know you. You wouldn't keep something important from me. Her words pierced him. He felt his breath quicken, and his heart raced. He wasn't ready to tell her everything, but how long could he keep lying? How long could he hide the truth from someone who trusted him? Jessica, please, his voice became almost a whisper. I don't want you to worry. Just believe me, I need time. She looked at him for a long moment before quietly nodding. Okay, she said. But you know I can't ignore what's happening. When you're ready to talk, I'll be here. I want you to know that. He could feel the tension building inside him. He knew he couldn't hide the truth for long, but what could he do if his life had become a web of lies and deceit? Thanks, he mumbled, and quickly headed to the bedroom without looking back. Jessica stood in the living room, watching him leave. She wasn't ready to accept what was happening between them. She could feel something was wrong, but she couldn't figure out exactly what. But one thing was clear, something had changed in their relationship, and she wasn't going to back down. Brian had long gotten used to the fact that his workday started with the secretary bringing him coffee and reading off the list of tasks for the day. But today was different, he was without Monica, and now he had to find someone to fill that role. The secretary needed to be not only efficient, but able to adapt quickly to his pace. But most importantly, she couldn't be connected to him the way Monica had been. When he opened the conference room door, Brian saw a line of women waiting for interviews. They were dressed in sharp business suits, but with an element of allure that hinted they were hoping to impress the boss not only professionally. He scanned them with a reserved gaze, and one, a redhead with a serious expression, caught his attention. Brian, are you ready to begin? Her voice echoed in his head as she was the first to be invited in. The interviews went on for hours. Brian tried not to miss any details, asking questions, observing how each candidate held herself and responded. Most of the women tried to show themselves in the best light, but he was looking for something more, not just professionalism. In his mind, Monica's image kept resurfacing, and, against his will, he remembered her, how effortlessly she always read his mood, how she knew without words when to step back and when to press. These thoughts troubled him, but he pushed them aside. Finally, he invited the last candidate in. It was Kelly, a blonde with delicate features and a calm gaze. She appeared confident but without being overly pushy, and that intrigued him. Have a seat, Kelly, he said with a slight smile. She sat across from him and met his gaze. Thank you, Brian, she said calmly. Brian nodded and began the interview. So, tell me about your experience. How do you see your role in our company? Kelly answered clearly and concisely, listing her achievements and describing her views on professionalism. She spoke confidently, and Brian liked that her responses weren't exaggerated or pretentious. Good, he said when she finished. How about stressful situations? Have you encountered them at your previous jobs? Kelly nodded. Yes, it happens. In those moments, the key is to stay calm. I try to stick to the plan of action and, if needed, I ask for advice from more experienced colleagues. His gaze remained attentive, and he noted her mature approach. Her calmness in her answers convinced him that she would be a good fit for the position. Kelly, you're a great match for us, he smiled, feeling relieved for the first time that morning. You can start tomorrow. My assistant will contact you and provide all the details. She smiled gratefully and extended her hand. Thank you, Brian. I'll do my best to live up to your trust. Brian nodded, feeling confident he made the right choice. After approving Kelly's candidacy, he returned to his office where Chad was waiting. His friend and colleague had been tense for a few days and clearly wanted to talk about what was going on with Brian. Chad walked in and went straight to the point. So, did you find a replacement? He asked with a smirk. 
Yeah, I think I found one, Brian answered shortly, gathering papers on his desk. Chad paused for a moment, studying him closely. He knew something was off beneath the comic exterior and couldn't just ignore it. Buddy, what's going on with Monica? Why so sudden? She was a decent employee. Brian clenched his jaw and turned to look out the window. He could feel Chad was about to ask those questions he didn't want to answer. He wasn't ready to open up, not even to his friend. We sorted everything out, Brian replied grimly, carefully choosing his words to make sure Chad wouldn't push further. Let's not talk about it. Chad frowned. Listen, Brian, I've known you for years. I can see something's wrong. If something happened, just say it. Brian turned around and snapped. God, why do you always have to know everything? His voice turned cold, and he couldn't hide his irritation. Everything's fine, Chad. Let's just work. Chad was taken aback by the reaction and fell silent, eyeing him warily. Brian felt pressure building inside his chest, but he suppressed it, keeping it to himself. He didn't want to drop the mask in front of his friend, but he knew that Chad, more than anyone else, could see through him. All right, Chad finally said, standing up. If you don't want to talk, I won't push. But remember, I'm here if you change your mind. Brian nodded silently, avoiding his gaze. Chad left, and he was left alone in the quiet of the office. A few days later, Kelly knocked on Brian's office door. She stood in the doorway with a slight look of concern on her face, which immediately caught his attention. Is something wrong? Brian asked, pulling his gaze away from the papers. We have a new person, she answered, pausing slightly. A janitor came to apply. Brian frowned. He wasn't particularly interested in such details and usually delegated them to Chad, his reliable assistant. He raised his hand to signal that he didn't want to discuss it further. I have enough on my plate, Chad, deal with it, he said. Kelly nodded and quickly left the office. Brian returned to his paperwork, but he still felt uneasy. Something in her voice when she mentioned the new janitor made him pause, but he decided not to waste time on unnecessary questions. As agreed, Chad took care of all the organization with the new staff. When he left Brian's office, there was a woman standing in front of him, tall, with dark hair, and her gaze seemed familiar. Chad tensed, unable to immediately recall where he might have seen her before. Haven't we met somewhere before? He asked, raising an eyebrow in surprise. The woman looked at him with slight confusion before replying. No, her voice was calm and clear. My name is Leona, and I really need this job. Chad continued to study her, trying to place her, but there was no hint of deception in her responses, which only increased his confusion. All right, he said after a brief pause, deciding not to waste any more time on guesses. You can start today. Leona nodded, offering a restrained smile, and went to change. Chad stood there for a moment, watching her leave, then turned back to his desk. But as soon as she disappeared from view, more questions started to flood his mind. He really felt like he had seen her face somewhere before. But he didn't know why it mattered so much. In the following days, as Leona began working at the office, Chad noticed her more often. She was always on the move, silently dusting furniture, sweeping floors, and always smiling when their eyes met. But each time her face caught his gaze, his unease grew. Chad had a strange, but unclear feeling that he knew this woman. He tried to remember where he might have seen her before, but couldn't come up with an answer. One evening, as the day was winding down and the office was gradually emptying, Chad decided to bring it up with Brian. Brian, don't you think our janitor's face looks familiar? He asked, not hiding the concern in his voice. Brian, noticing once again how his friend couldn't shake off that odd feeling, replied with a smile. Oh, buddy, it's time you found yourself a girlfriend, or you'll end up eyeing the janitors, he laughed, deciding it was just Chad's harmless habit of making a big deal out of little things. Hey, that's not what I mean, Chad smiled in response, but his expression remained serious. Every time I see her, I feel like we know each other. Maybe we met before?
Brian gave a casual shrug, signaling to his friend that he didn't want to pursue the topic further. Don't worry about it, he said, shifting his attention to the documents in front of him. Look at her, nothing special, right? Chad glanced over and noticed how Leona was carefully wiping the table in the corner of the office. She moved with such grace that it unwittingly drew attention. But with each glance, his feeling grew stronger. Several days passed. Chad couldn't shake the feeling that Leona was hiding something important, something they had once shared. One day, after work, he ran into her in the hallway. Hey, Leona, he said, trying to start a conversation. She turned to him with a light smile, but her eyes were cold and unreadable. Hey, Chad, she replied, maintaining a neutral tone. Can I ask you something? Chad couldn't hold back. You really don't remember me? Leona stopped, seemingly a little surprised. Her face remained calm, but something in her eyes changed. She looked like she was about to answer, but for a moment, her expression became more resolute. No, I don't remember, she replied briefly, but there was a note in her voice that hadn't been there before. Chad couldn't figure out what this woman was hiding, but he felt there was more beneath her cold exterior. It became clear to him that he needed to dig deeper than just looking for answers to surface-level questions. I know you're hiding something, he whispered, unable to stop himself. You've definitely been in my life before. Leona looked at him and said, not lifting her gaze. You're mistaken. I'm just a janitor. I'm sure we have different circles. Chad felt his heart rate quicken. This was the moment that could change everything. At that moment, Brian stepped into the hallway and, noticing his friend talking to Leona, approached with the air of a business person. He knew these kinds of conversations weren't his business, but he couldn't resist getting involved. Chad, what are you doing here? Everything okay? He interrupted their conversation. Chad quickly looked away, feeling that he wasn't ready to open up to his friend. All he knew was that Leona and her hidden story could be the key to unraveling what was going on in his life. But not now. Not with Brian around. Months later, after a period of intense work, Brian finally decided it was time to take a break and unwind. He thought about how to celebrate the accomplishments of the car dealership. This day had been significant for his company, and he felt something needed to be done that would leave a lasting impression. He was sitting in his office, sorting through papers when he suddenly put them aside and called Chad. Chad, what do you think about throwing a company party for the dealership's anniversary? Brian asked with a slight smile. The idea had just started to take shape in his mind, and he was sure it would be something memorable. On the other end of the line, Chad's sigh immediately turned into enthusiastic agreement. Great idea. You know I love parties, he responded with genuine excitement. This is exactly what we need to give everyone a break. It's going to be fun. Brian leaned back in his chair with satisfaction and sighed. I think it'll be more than just a party, but a real celebration. We all deserve a little fun. We need to make it grand. You know, if you want something grand, I'm going to need to help with the organization, Chad laughed. I'm no rookie at this. So let's start planning, because there's not much time left. Of course, Brian replied. We need to think through every little detail. But first, let's figure out where and how we're going to hold it. Chad paused for a moment. He loved organizing events, as he knew how important it was to create an atmosphere that everyone would enjoy. He quickly considered several options, but settled on one that he felt was perfect for such an event. How about holding the party at a fancy club? He suggested. It has a stage for live music, professional lighting, and plenty of space for dancing. I know a place that would be perfect. Excellent. Brian said. Let's go with that club. And we'll invite everyone, employees, clients, partners. It has to feel truly elite. The day of the preparations arrived. Chad and Brian were both in the office, starting to plan all the details of the party. Brian was in charge of the overall concept, while Chad handled the organizational aspects.
We'll take care of all the little things, Chad said, jotting notes down in his notebook. Everything has to be top-notch, food, music, lighting. And, of course, invitations. Let's not forget those. Of course, Brian replied. I want everyone to feel like they're walking the red carpet. We'll create an atmosphere of exclusivity. Everything has to be perfect. Chad watched his friend carefully, noticing that his face finally softened into a smile. This was a moment when he could relax a little after the stressful work days. Chad was glad Brian had decided to take this step because he knew that for him, it wasn't just about achieving success, it was also about enjoying the fruits of his hard work. What do you think about inviting some famous people? Chad suggested. Maybe a few motorsport stars. They could add some flair and excitement. Brian thought for a moment. He liked to influence the company's image and knew that such invitations would not only attract media attention but also potential clients. That would definitely elevate the status of the event, he said, nodding. Let's get in touch with some race car drivers. If everything goes right, it'll be a huge hit. On the day of the party, Chad and Brian arrived at the club several hours before the event began. Everything was ready, lights, stage, beautiful tables decorated with the finest flowers, and paintings by famous artists hung on the walls. The staff was dressed in formal suits, and the music filled the space with a light, rhythmic atmosphere. Perfect, Brian said, looking around. Everything's set. Now the key is not to panic. Chad smiled, watching everything come to life. He'd always known how to get people to work smoothly, and this night was no exception. You're right, he replied, pouring himself a glass of water. This is going to be great. Everyone will love it. As the first guests began to arrive at the club, the atmosphere grew more intense, but also exciting. Among the guests were employees of the dealership, clients, and even a few famous people who had come at Brian's invitation. Chad watched this unfold and was confident that this night would be one of the most memorable events in the company's history. The anniversary party for the dealership was in full swing. Guests were laughing, dancing, enjoying drinks and food, and the atmosphere was truly festive. Everything was going according to plan, and Brian was pleased with how well the event was organized. That evening, he decided to relax and enjoy the time with colleagues and friends. But, as it often happens, the night took an unexpected turn. The club was crowded, and a large table was surrounded by employees, clients, and partners, all decorated to create an air of luxury and success. Brian, in his usual business suit, sat next to his wife, Jessica, enjoying her company. I'm glad you found the time to come, Brian whispered in her ear and, unable to resist, kissed her shoulder. Jessica smiled, her face light and relaxed, in contrast to Brian's usual focused and serious demeanor. Tonight, he was especially at ease. I'm glad I could make it, too, she replied softly, her gaze sparkling as she looked around at the company. Colleagues were chatting merrily, joking, and raising their glasses. Brian picked up his glass of whiskey, raised it in the air, and stood up. Colleagues, I'm happy we're doing something great together. I'm grateful to each of you. I'm sure that together, we'll reach new heights. He said, raising his glass and a toast to his employees. To us. Chad chimed in with a broad smile. At that moment, everyone's attention shifted to the entrance. Monica walked into the club, looking completely different from usual. She appeared transformed, a new hairstyle, a light evening dress that highlighted her slender figure, and makeup that gave her gaze an unexpected brightness. Chad froze for a moment, unable to believe his eyes. He looked at Monica, then shifted his gaze to Brian. A slight shock passed across his face. Do you see that? That's the janitor. She just works in the office without makeup, Chad whispered, not taking his eyes off Monica. Brian squinted disapprovingly, trying to get a better look at her. Just moments ago, this girl had been simply the janitor, and now she was walking into the restaurant like she was the star of the night. But who was with her? Brian noticed she was walking arm in arm with a man he recognized, Mr. Evans, Jessica's father.
The moment Brian realized who it was, he couldn't hide his shock and nearly choked on his whiskey. What the hell? He blurted out. He tried to compose himself, but the emotions were too strong. He stood up to approach them, but Mr. Evans stepped in front of him, his presence so strong and commanding that all the eyes in the restaurant turned toward him. Now that's a surprise, Brian muttered, extending his hand to Mr. Evans. But Mr. Evans ignored the gesture, simply nudging him aside and continuing toward the table. Monica walked beside him with the same confident, almost calm stride. All eyes were on them, and an unexpected silence filled the air. On this significant day for the dealership, I have a few words, Mr. Evans said, his voice loud and firm. Everyone, including Brian, froze, trying to understand what was happening. What could this man possibly be saying? Why had he brought Monica with him? What was going on? Brian felt his face pale, and he involuntarily took a step back, his gaze darting between the guests and Monica. He could hardly imagine that this moment would turn out to be so dramatic. Starting tomorrow, you'll have a new director, Mr. Evans said. A hush fell over the room. People began looking at each other, trying to figure out what he meant. Brian felt his heart skip a beat. He wanted to say something, but didn't know how to react. I don't understand, he said, unable to hide his astonishment. What do you mean? What about me? Mr. Evans simply raised his hand as if dismissing Brian's words and with a look motioned toward the seated guests. Everyone continued to watch in silence. We'll have a very long conversation, Mr. Evans said calmly. For now, I ask you all to enjoy the rest of the evening. Have a pleasant evening. As he spoke, the tension in the room grew. Brian stood there, struck dumb, unable to understand what was happening. He couldn't believe that his father-in-law, who had been such an important figure in his life, had just issued such a threat. Without looking back, Mr. Evans took a few steps toward the door. Brian realized that he was about to face something worse than just an argument. This was a challenge that Brian couldn't ignore. In the next moment, Mr. Evans led Brian out of the restaurant and the door closed behind them. All that remained in the room were stunned colleagues who had no idea what was going on. Chad, standing to the side, was equally shaken. All he could do was stand and watch as his friend and colleague disappeared into the darkness of the night. What was that? Someone whispered from the guests, watching Brian leave. What a twist, another voice added. In that moment, the restaurant fell into silence, broken only by the background noise, as if the world around had changed forever. The darkness of the evening, slowly filling the street, felt even more oppressive to Brian, who still stood outside the restaurant, unable to believe what had just happened. His thoughts were tangled, emotions swirling inside him. He could feel his life crumbling before his eyes. Mr. Evans led him out onto the street, and as they walked toward the car, everything around seemed wrong. Jessica stood in the doorway of the restaurant, unsure of what to do. Everything happening seemed like a nightmare she wasn't ready to be a part of. Dad, what's going on? Jessica asked, stepping toward them and taking her father's hand as if it could protect her. Mr. Evans looked at her with a heavy gaze, not hiding his disdain. Darling, this scum isn't worth your attention, he said, pointing at Brian as if he were an object to be discarded. Dad, this is my husband. Jessica replied, a cold shiver running through her body. Don't call him that. Her words were filled with confusion, and her eyes showed the bewilderment she felt. She couldn't believe her father was speaking about her husband like that. Darling, Mr. Evans continued, his voice growing even calmer, do you see this girl? Jessica looked in the direction he pointed, her gaze stopping on Monica. She stood off to the side, clearly in no hurry to get involved in this conversation. There was no sympathy or regret on her face, only a cold confidence that she had done exactly what she wanted. So? Jessica still didn't understand what was happening. Her voice was wary, but she hadn't yet figured out where all of this was leading. She's your husband's mistress, and she's pregnant with his child, Mr. Evans said, his words like a death sentence. Jessica couldn't breathe. 
Her father's words pierced her like a knife, and she barely managed to hold back tears. What? She exclaimed, recoiling in pain. Brian stood in shock. He couldn't believe this was happening. His mind was in total chaos, and he didn't know what to say. He only knew that everything had collapsed, and perhaps there was no going back. Jess, sweetheart, I can explain everything. He tried to take a step toward her, reaching out his hands. Believe me, it's not what you think. Jessica couldn't bring herself to believe him. He looked as though he was ready to justify any of his actions, but her heart no longer trusted his words or his promises. Is it true? She asked, her voice trembling with pain and confusion. Uh. It was a mistake. Brian didn't know what to say. All his words lost meaning, and he felt that moment had come when even he no longer believed in his excuses. Jessica couldn't take it anymore. Her face turned red with fury and hurt. She turned away from him and, unable to hold back her tears, slapped him across the face. The blow was not just physical, but emotional. It was painful for both of them, but she couldn't bear the lies any longer. How could you? She sobbed, her voice the final cry of pain. Without another word, crying, she got into the car where her father was already sitting. Brian, your dealership owes a large sum, Mr. Evans smirked. If you don't pay it back within a month, I'll crush you. Mr. Evans started the engine, ignoring Brian, who stood in the middle of the empty parking lot. He still couldn't process that he had lost everything. Jessica disappeared into the car, and her gaze stayed with him in his memory. Brian stood there, not knowing how to move forward. His life was falling apart, and everything was happening so quickly that he couldn't react. He didn't even notice how Monica appeared next to him, her smile self-satisfied, but there was something in her eyes that made Brian flinch. So, darling, I told you you'd regret this, Monica said, her voice ominous, and her smile never left her face. Brian felt a rush of anger fill his chest. He was ready to explode, but his emotions were tangled with confusion and despair. You set this up. He shouted, clenching his fists. He was so enraged that he could barely hold himself back. You. You're to blame for all of this. Monica looked at him with a slight mocking glance, taking her time to respond. Her calmness only made Brian angrier. Did you think the paperwork problems just happened on their own? She continued with a smirk. Mr. Evans has been digging into you for a long time, and I just helped him with it. You dug your own grave, I just gave you a little push. Brian couldn't believe his ears. He had been so consumed with his personal problems that he hadn't noticed how everything around him was falling apart. He hadn't seen how his own life had become part of a bigger game where he was just a pawn. But Monica wasn't done yet. You have no idea what's coming next, she said with a sneer. This is just the beginning, Brian. She turned and walked toward her brand new car. Brian watched as she got into the driver's seat, and everything inside him twisted with rage and disappointment. Monica started the engine and drove off, leaving him alone in the empty parking lot. He stood there, feeling his life slipping away like sand through his fingers. All that was left for him was to stand and try to figure out how to climb out of this hole he had dug for himself. But each step he took only deepened the hole. 